There's one pretty basic card making product that I have never used. Distress Oxides. Now I did pick up a bunch on sale earlier this year, but they've been sitting in my drawer unused ever since. I know why they're just sitting there, and I'm gonna bet you've got the same thing going on with some of your unused supplies. I think it's time we get this problem sorted out and start using that mess of brand new supplies. Hey there, it's Carrie at Ink Hill Revival, and I'm all about hoping you see what you and your stash can do. So Distress Oxides came out about two months after I'd finished slowly building up my mini Distress Ink collection. I'd even bought a bunch of re-inkers and it just killed me. I wasn't gonna spend any more on inks till I got some good use out of what I'd already bought. But here we are, it's four years later, doing a card making channel too. And I got thinking, you know, I think it's time to upgrade. So why haven't I used the inks I bought? They're just sitting right here. Well, they're completely inconvenient to use. I've got zero organization, the inks are just stuffed in a drawer, and I have no idea what to do with these really thick blending foams. Sound familiar? You got any of these new, unused supply piles too? But maybe you're like me, and you're still browsing more new products instead of dealing with those new products. I get it. It's super easy, super fun to shop. But what if our supplies were like that? What if they were organized in a way that made them so easy to pull out and make with and even easy to clean up after? That's actually my goal today with this Distress Oxide mess. So stay to the end because I'm going to show you the perfect storage solution I came up with for those. But along the way, I'm sharing five organizing tips to help you clean up and get using your pile of new supplies. Tip number one, put some money and time towards organizing. I know, it's way more exciting to buy supplies than containers. And it's the same with making instead of spending time categorizing and labeling. But think about it like this. If you pass on just one stamp set every now and then and put that $15 toward organization, that could help you get so much more money's worth out of all the supplies you've already bought. Or let's say you spend just one evening a month organizing supplies instead of making with them they're gonna be way more likely to reach for all those new supplies if they're unpacked, organized, and ready to go. The second organizing tip is make it easy to get your supplies out and put away. I'd wanted to store my Distress Oxides just the same way I store the rest of my inks. I love my ink setup. But you know how loose the lids are on Distress Inks and Oxides? They fall right off when you store them on their side. So I thought, well, maybe I can just stack these in the drawer. It's free but I've organized like that before and I just don't reach for things in piles. So make sure you know yourself and think, if I store it this way, is it gonna be too much trouble to get out and actually use? Thinking back to principle one, I knew if I wanted a usable system, I needed to put some money down. And with those loose lids, I need a custom fitting system. So I did something I do not do very often. I bought the official, and usually more expensive, storage containers. But these Tim Holtz ink pad storage tins are an exact fit for those ink pads. And luckily, I can get away with just buying two since I'm not gonna get all the ink colors. And check this out, the tins also fit perfect in my Ikea drawers, but they're actually too perfect. <laughs> they're so wedged in, I can't open the lids. And that means I'm gonna have to take the whole tin out and use it from my desk every time. And that's not quite easy enough for me. So I'm actually gonna remove the tops of the tins and just use the base of them in my drawers. I know that feels kind of crazy to buy the tins and then just use half the product, but I'm not going to let the money spent on that part keep me from organizing in a way that really works for me. Now for these domed foam blenders. They're too thick to store under the ink pads like I always used to do, so I need a new idea. Now I've seen other people store big collections of the actual blending tools in like a tiered nail polish container, but I'd rather go with something much smaller that I can fit in my drawer. I was super excited to find these divided stackable containers at Daiso. That's a Japanese dollar store. Each foam fits perfectly in a square and storing them Velcro side up, it's gonna be super easy to just stick in a blending tool and be good to go. Next up is the third organizing tip. Labeling. 
<laughs> labeling supplies makes it so much easier to find what you need and then get those supplies put back where they go. There's just a little more accountability to put things in their actual home instead of just stuffing it in a drawer. Guilty. <laughs> Plus, a lot of storage setups can end up hiding your actual product label, and then you can't even tell what things are without your own labels. Now, Tim Holtz has some free ready-to-print labels for his Distress Inks and Oxides over on his website, but I wanted to use an exact ink color here, so I used a labeling idea that I got from Jennifer McGuire. I cut thin strips of cardstock, plus some extras because future ink purchases and mistakes. Yes, I will definitely have those. And then I ink blended one for each color. I glued these onto the side of my matching ink pad and used a label maker to print a clear label with each ink name. I set my label to print small text and full margins so I'd have a long enough label to fully protect that ink swatch. And be sure to print multiples of your labels when you've already got it all typed in there if you plan to label with it more than once, like I'm doing my inks and my blending foams. After sticking the label on, I did a quick swipe with my craft knife and sized it perfectly to the ink pad thickness. The fourth organizing tip, and very possibly the most important one to staying organized, is creating systems that can grow. Our craft stashes seem to keep on growing, and so the way we organize needs to be able to handle that. If it doesn't, we're setting ourselves up for a lot more reorganizing work in the future, or just messes of new product. I was struggling with this one though for those blending foams. I knew I wanted to store them in rainbow order, so it's quick and easy to find, but if I just got one new ink pad, whole system's thrown off. I need repositionable labels. So I ink blended each color onto the long side of these rectangle swatches. When that was done, I scored one quarter inch wings on both of the short sides. All that's left now is quickly sticking on the labels that are already printed and folding in the wings. Check out how perfectly these little labels stay in place. And since they won't be adhered, it's gonna be just as easy to pull them back out and rearrange. I love this system. The final organizing tip is to pay attention to your unique organizing needs through the whole process. You've got a unique storage space, organizing preferences, and you've also got a unique pile of supplies that you need to organize. So if I just stopped by Dollar Tree and said, oh yeah, I should spend a little more on organizing and less on supplies, and picked up some random cute baskets, well, that's actually very unlikely to really improve my organization or get me using my new supplies. That's because we need containers that custom fit our needs. We don't wanna be fitting our stuff to random containers. So plan ahead, bring measurements from home and a measuring tape along with you, and shop around for a combination that feels custom fit to your space and your supplies. And sometimes you gotta be willing to buy a little extra at the store, take it home, play around, and make some returns after. This drawer ended up fitting together like a puzzle. I put an old watercolor container in the back to kind of keep everything wedged forward and accessible. But turns out my containers for the blending foams were just a little too tall for the drawer, but I customized that by shaving off the feet from one of the containers. But be so careful with your craft knife if you do this. I also got this container at Daiso and it perfectly fills up the rest of the space and gives a home for my blending tools. Looking at this drawer makes me so excited to get using my inks. It's not a scary, messy pile anymore. In fact, I left that drawer open for a couple days. <laughs> now, what if organizing didn't just get us using that pile of new supplies, but it could actually take us from hating a past supply to absolutely loving it? Let me show you how that can work right here, and I'll see you there.